Cotonesca was one of the first sauces I learned how to make when I began my culinary journey over 25 years ago. Now, the meaning of the word puttanesca and its origin are a little contested because let me tell you, one of the stories is crazy. Regardless though, the sauce with pasta is extremely flavorful and easy to make with capers, garlic, tomatoes, olives, and anchovies. Even though it was one of the first sauces I learned how to make, it's still one of my favorites. We're gonna start by knocking out some prep and getting right into it. Sound good? Let's cook. We're gonna start by thinly slicing up six cloves of garlic. If you love garlic, you can absolutely use more. And if you wanna use a mandolin, totally fine as well. When you thinly slice and you get to the end of that little stub piece, just roll it over so it's flat, just to make sure your fingers are safe. Next, I've got a half cup or 90 grams of olives. Now the classic olives would be the Gaita olive. If you can't find that, Kalamata olives work perfectly. Make sure you get them pitted or else you are gonna be very annoyed at trying to get the pit out of all these olives. You can also leave these whole if you want, very classic. Me, I like to slice them up a little bit. Now for a little bit of spice, I have one Fresno pepper. You can also use a red finger pepper. Slice off the end, slice it in half, and then you want to remove most of that pith. If you love spice, leave that pith in there. That's where all the heat is. Now, if you don't have access to any chilies like this, you can substitute in one teaspoon or two grams of crushed red pepper flakes. Just give these a nice small dice and set them to the side. Now for the part that everyone always freaks out over, anchovies. I've got four anchovies here. You can absolutely put them in whole, would also be classic cooking them whole. But for me, I like to just thinly slice it up, distribute it out, make sure the flavor isn't so intense. All right, Comies, when it comes to tomatoes, you know I'm a little bit particular, and especially when it comes to canned, I love using San Marzano tomatoes. They're slightly sweet, not horribly acidic. The flavor is fantastic. Now, if you wanna purchase these, you wanna make sure you get the real deal. To do that, it should say D-O-P on the front. This translates from Italian to English as protected designation of origin. That means you are getting what it says you are getting. They're from San Marzano. Okay, another great option would be canned tomatoes. You know I've canned a bunch. Got some fantastic sweet tomatoes. You be the judge here. But what we want to do is crush them by hand. Whichever one you land on, you're going to need 28 ounces or 794 grams of tomatoes. Now using a glove, clean hands, or even a potato masher. I've seen that used many times. You want to squeeze and break up the whole peeled tomatoes. This just makes the sauce a little thick and also not too chunky. Prep on this pasta is incredibly simple. Just a few things. All right. Now at the beginning of the video, I said there was one crazy story about how puttanesca came to be. All right, the word puttanesca, they said, came from puttana, which I'm sorry to say means prostitute. And one of the stories says in the Spanish quarters, which is located in Naples, Italy, the prostitutes would make this quick meal for their clients. Okay, fine. Second story, puttana stems from the Latin word putida, which means stinking. And there are a lot of aromas. You've got anchovies and olives and all sorts of stuff. So I'm sticking with the second story because the first one, it's too crazy for me. All right, let's cook this up. In a large six quart rondeau pan, we're gonna add in four tablespoons or 52 grams of olive oil. I know that's a bit much, but we need some fat for this. We're gonna turn the heat to low medium. Then we're going to add in our thinly sliced garlic. Now, we're just gonna cook this until fragrant. They say when you smell it, it's done. That's only gonna be about 30 to 45 seconds. It's not gonna brown up, but it's going to be finished. Now at this stage, we're gonna grab our Fresno peppers and we're gonna add them in there. We're only gonna saute these for maybe one to two minutes. That is all. Now at this point, we're going to add in a few more things beginning with our anchovies. Next, two tablespoons or 15 grams of capers. If a little bit of the brine gets in there, no problem. We're going to saute this for just two to three minutes, get all those flavors infusing. Then we're gonna add in our crushed tomatoes. All we wanna do is cook this for maybe three to four minutes. Again, let some of those flavors infuse, let some of that delicious tomato flavor come out. Boom, we are done. We wanna finish this off though with the thinly sliced olives, then two tablespoons or eight grams of finely minced fresh Italian flat leaf parsley. 
Mix this together until combined. Be sure to taste it at this point. You've got a lot of salty stuff in there, the olives, anchovies, capers. Do this before adjusting any seasonings. And then when you're ready, season it up with a little bit of sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Of course, stir all those ingredients together until they are combined. And then we're just going to set it to the side and turn off the heat and get going on our pasta. All right, Comies, you have a couple options when it comes to pasta. You can use fresh, linguine, bucatini, spaghetti, perfect, or dried pasta. I know I've been harsh on dried pasta, but I promise I do use it all the time. It's very simple, it's delicious, and of course, it's widely used in Italy. Make sure you can find a pasta that's lighter in color. When it's really yellow, that means it's been dried at really high heat. It's not great for you. I'm gonna go with spaghetti. In a large pot of boiling salted water, we are gonna season it up so that it tastes like the ocean. This will ensure that it seasons up our pasta so that it's also delicious. Let's add in our one pound or 454 grams of spaghetti pasta. Now, I like to always move spaghetti around because it always wants to clump together on me, which always drives me crazy. So every minute or so, I'm gonna come back, give it a stir, make sure everything's good. And then to ensure that it is finished, if you don't have a lot of experience, you're not sure what it should look or feel like, try it. It should be al dente or to the tooth. It should be slightly firm, but not hard or chalky. Once it's to that consistency, we're going to take it out of the pan. Remember, it's also going to cook a little more in the sauce, so you want to get this right. Add the drained pasta right to that pan, and then mix everything together with spoons, tongs, tweezers, whatever you have. Adjust any seasonings also at this point with more salt and fresh cracked black pepper as you need it. And it really is a random combination of ingredients and some salty ones at that, but the flavors are incredible. All right, one more origin story. It takes place in the 1950s at a restaurant called Ischia. Now, some folks came in there and they said they want puttanata qualsiasi, which translates to whatever you have, kind of throw it together. And the chef there had tomatoes, he had garlic, he had capers, which is really the basis for this sauce. Add in a couple other things and boom. A lot of folks think the modern day interpretation of that is prepared as it comes. Simple, whatever you got, put it together. All right, let's plate this up. Wrap up a bunch of the pasta around some tongs, some tweezers, or even a carving fork. Then once you've got a good amount, we are going right on to a ladle. Put it on the ladle and then slowly turn it and rotate it. As you do this, all the pasta that's still in the pan is going to come up and wrap around the tweezers or tongs or fork in that ladle. You'll have a nice little tight nest just like this. This is how they get it so perfectly and beautiful at Italian restaurants. Then you can serve it up on a plate or in a bowl. You know me when it's saucy, I like to put it in a bowl. Then grab several spoonfuls of all the goodness left in that pan the tomatoes, capers, anchovies, olives, all that stuff, and dump it all over the top, let it roll over to the sides. Oh my gosh, so delicious. No matter where Putanesca got its name from, it's so tasty and so simple. This is another 20, 30 minute max pasta, boom, delicious. Now, if you love this, you will absolutely love my pasta a la recipe. I've got a great recipe video. See you on there.